Further news on the relatively unknown international phenomenon known as birth tourism. We reported last night Meadowland Hospital's Amera Mama program entices pregnant Russians to deliver their babies here, making the babies eligible for U.S. citizenship. The story was broken by NJ Spotlight healthcare reporter Lilo Stainton and her team. Thank you for being here. Great piece of work. It took you nine months. How did you even begin? to start investigating this? Well, we, um, it came, like a lot of good stories, it came from a tip from somebody who had, let's just say, um, a less than positive experience at the hospital. And um, this particular individual had an issue with, uh, with a bill that they thought was very high. Um, but one thing that's been interesting about reporting is we've heard a lot of things from people in the, in the community that have have just heard odd things about this hospital. So when we first heard this story, I mean, it seemed, it seemed unbelievable in certain ways. Um, but on the other hand, it, you know, there was a sense that, you know, if it was possible, this might be the place in New Let's Jersey. Let's very quickly make a distinction between anchor babies yeah. and birth tourism. I think that is an important distinction because Anchor babies are really, there's an entirely different intention. Those are people who intend for their family and their life to be in this country. And they want to be part of this country and build, you know, their future here. This is a different scenario. This is people who um, are looking, it's an insurance policy, as someone told in me. In case it's something terrible happens, they've home. got one child who's a citizen exactly. and they can get... And, to the and, and, and the, it's, there are benefits for that child um, in all kinds of ways, but there are also benefits for the family. Now, you said there were problems with this birth tur tourism at Meadowlands Hospital, not the least of which was that there was no NICU, neonatal intensive yeah. care unit, and no ICU in case anything went wrong right. during the birth. And I think it's important to point out that, well, two things. Um, while this, this service was alarming, um, and it turns out it's not that unusual nationwide. Um, I mean, unusual, but not unheard of, I should say. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that we did not hear, we were not able to, we, we never saw evidence that anybody was seriously harmed in this process. And, and I think that, you know, the outcome, it's more a question of, is this the best place to be, to be promoting birth as one of its premier services? At any time, did you find the Meadowlands Hospital had violated the law? Well, the law in this particular case is fairly gray, but the, the law in question with birth tourism is all about um, immigration law. And, and, that is, and the violation in that case would take place in, in a you know, in an office with a bureaucrat somewhere far away. We never got close to that. And I have no sense, you know, I have no knowledge one way or the other whether they did. I think, you know, what we found is that there are all kinds of other sort of regulatory questions that have come up during the reporting about the hospital. And, and while... And what are they? Because I know that the yeah. operators have ha have somewhat of a checkered past. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's fair to say. Um, th they have had... There are a number of violations with filing paperwork to the state. And while that may sound sort of inconsequential, we're talking about annual um, financial reports, which are required of all hospitals to file. And which and they're not doing. They're not doing, and they haven't filed for the last two years. Um, and, and they've accumulated now $2 million, uh, I'm sorry, $200,000 in fines from the state. Um, just directly related to, to late filing. You reported in the second part of your three-part series that while the hospital may not have been very profitable, the investors were making a right. lot of money. Right. And I really, I should credit my uh, colleague, former colleague, Andrew Kitchenman, for a lot of that work, um, and Colleen O'Day. Um, what we learned is, yeah, that they had taken out, um, you know, $8 million dollars sort of directly, and then there was another about nine million that had flowed into various companies that they controlled. Um, and I think that's where, you know, that's sort of what started to raise questions for some of the people who, who were watching this from the outside. What is the thing that, that the most uh, raised your sense of, wait, there's something more here? Probably, um, well, I have to say, I mean, the Amara Mama itself was, was surprising. But then when we found out it really wasn't that successful, it sort of seemed a little, it, it put it in a different context. They, they, they haven't, it doesn't appear that they've had a lot of births that way. Um, I think the most sort of 
fascinating detail to me was Vogster Entertainment. And if, if you don't know this, go back and look on Colleen's fabulous chart. Vogster is a computer company that makes violent video games. Um, but it's also the company that was hired and paid three million dollars by the Meadowlands Hospital to to create software to do some of their accounting and payroll and billing stuff. Um, things that they had had they were saying computer problems were a big part of the reason so that no they were delayed. So no particular expertise in doing it. We didn't appear now, so. Yeah. There's a word that somebody is out there ready to buy Metal yes. Health Hospital. Is that true? Yeah. Um, there's been an application filed to the state, uh, state health department. They are looking at that application. Um, we don't know whether that's a that would be keeping it as for profit or what would happen if it was a conversion back to non profit. Um, we don't really know yet anything about that. Do you thing. know if state regulators are poised to intervene in anything? Yeah. I think they're taking a very close look at this. I mean, they have always said that um, that uh, you know their their oversight of Meadowlands has been unprecedented, and and it is it has been strong. I think the question is, what else can they do? And I think that they're going to take a very serious look at the new owner and, and think some of this through as they're reviewing that CN, which is which is what the process is all about. Lee Lausanne, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me.